I think we. I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do. I suspect. <laughs> I went to law school on a full academic scholarship. The only one in my in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. <sighs> Well, as you know by now, all of that was lies, and Joe was caught, and he tried to talk his way out of it shortly thereafter in a lengthy press conference. Joe thought he was pretty slick, but he wasn't. And after this press conference, he had to give another one where he announced that he was dropping out because he got caught plagiarizing, he got caught lying, and he got caught being pretty much all around a weird guy. Interestingly, he never paid much of a price for this. I think it's a fascinating episode in um, Mr. Biden's life. I want to bring in Doug Weed, presidential historian, author of Inside Trump's White House, and also Craig Shirley, Reagan biographer and presidential historian, Newsmax analyst. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, I know you both remember when this happened. Um, Joe Biden, I don't think, ever paid much of a price for this, because he went on to a, you know, reasonably you know, successful, unsuccessful. He went back to business as usual in his life when he got caught. I don't think that would happen today. I don't think he can get caught like he did today and just go back to business as usual. Craig, am I wrong? No, uh, you're not wrong, Greg, at all. But we've always known there's a double standard. Look, he went on to become vice president of the United States. And you just touched the surface in the opening of. Uh, uh, about the uh, catalog of lives of, uh, of Joe Biden. He lifted speeches from Neil Kinnock, who was a British labor leader. He lifted speeches of Bobby Kennedy. Uh, he lifted uh, five pages uh, in his um, in, in law school for his uh, final paper from another uh, from another academic work. Uh, is, is that through his entire life? He, he once said that there were 100,000 people for his announcement when he ran for the first round for the Senate in 1972. Is that this man is a fabulous he tells lies uh, very, very easily, and then he believes his own lies. And uh, but, but he has never paid a price for it, which is really fascinating to me. Right, because the media, they were tough on him back then, but they were tough on him for an afternoon. And then it was back to good old <laughs> Joe. You know, Doug, one thing. He told that crowd in New Hampshire that he graduated in the top half of his law school class. Now, in reality, as he publicly admitted, he graduated 76 in a class of 85. That's not something you misremember. That's something, if you say top half, when you're really 76 out of 85, you are lying. And that, to me, if you say it publicly while you're trying to get people to like you, suggests that perhaps you have a screw loose. <laughs> Well, the real scandal here, Greg, uh, you've been talking about all during your show, is what isn't reported about uh, Joe Biden. I mean, a, a candidate for high school president gets more attention and more scrutiny than Joe Biden is get, gets. I'm uh, haunted by a quote from a Soviet poet who said that when the truth replaces uh, silence— is replaced with silence, that silence is a lie. It's not just what the media reports and misreports, it's what the media ignores. And that's what Joe Biden is benefiting from. He's getting a pass right up to the election. It's fascinating. It's, uh, I want to say tragic, but I think the American people are figuring out Anyway, they are. And I can kind of feel something seismic is happening even right now. I want to go back to that press conference from 1987. There's a certain naked ambition and arrogance to Joe Biden that was on display during this session. And uh, we've seen it after. But take a look at this. This is uh, sot number two. Biden, I will be there. In my zeal to uh, rekindle that idealism, I'm there will be other presidential campaigns. And I'll be there, Oliphant. I'll be there. There will be other opportunities. There will be other battles in other places, other times. And I'll be there. 
Uh, forgive me, but there's a bit of, uh, <laughs> I hate the phrase, but a little bit of white privilege going on there and a little bit of entitlement. Um, and he just doesn't strike me as a guy who's as smart as he thinks he is. That's one of his problems, Craig. His old chief of staff was a friend of mine who passed away some years ago. And uh, I went to uh, the, the uh, funeral and uh, Biden gave the eulogy. This was the most self-absorbed eulogy I'd ever heard in my life. He talked about, he, he was peppered with first-person pronouns, as in the chief of staff understood him. He got him. He, 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 he massaged him. He took care of whatever, whatever. I mean, he massaged him personally, but he massaged his speeches and things like that. But the, the speech, the eulogy was embarrassing in that he made it all about himself. That's interesting. Very interesting indeed. And by the way, something has happened to Joe over the years. I have this uh, side by side. Obviously, he's got an extensive plastic surgery. And in addition to his brain surgery, we know his brain was <laughs> operated on. It, I mean, it was serious. He almost died, but two separate brain surgeries. And he had them at a time, uh, Doug, you know, when I think, quite frankly, they can even go through the nose to operate on your brain now. Back then, they had to crack open the skull, and it, it really changed you as a person. Um, Craig, I'm sorry, Doug, final thoughts? Well, uh, the, my last 30 seconds would be, this is dangerous. What's happening here is dangerous. If Joe Biden wins the election, he's already promised to be the most progressive president in American history. He's picked as his vice president the most leftist senator in the U.S. Senate. Nonpartisan groups uh, judge her as that. If they control the Senate and the House, they'll stack the Supreme Court, add five justices, and all those other courts as well. They'll keep their promise and give free health care and free education and citizenship to all the illegal aliens. And the Democrats could run this country for the next hundred years. That's a very real possibility. And I think Donald Trump is seeing the danger of this election we're in right now. Yeah. They only want Joe to be a figurehead, let's face it. He doesn't care. I think he just wants the perks. I really do. But he's not going to get them. I'm feeling very good about <laughs> Tuesday. I think it could be an early night. Doug Weed, Craig Shirley, we thank you so much. See you next week and uh, when we come back. Hi there. Look, uh, with all this censorship going on, it's getting worse than ever. I'm being blocked everywhere I turn around. The only way we've been able to figure out how to beat it is if you subscribe to this channel and you hit the bell then you'll get a notice when I'm on television. Otherwise, you're not going to know. And I get emails from friends saying, I heard you were on TV, but I couldn't find you, and I can't find the YouTube, and I type in the subject, and it won't come up. I'll give you an idea of how bad it's become. I, I wrote Inside Trump's White House. It's the authorized history of the Trump administration with access to the whole family, all these wonderful interviews. And the media gives all this attention to anonymous, but not, not to actual sources on the record. And Twitter will not allow the company to advertise the book or promote the book on Twitter. That gives you an idea of where we are right now. This is, uh, as Joe Biden said, we're headed for a very dark winter. <laughs> Let's keep the lights on as long as we can. I want to hear from you, and I want you to hear from me. So subscribe to this channel and hit the bell. <laughs> Thank you.